Hello everyone and welcome to the final game of the World Chess Championship match between Yanni Pomnish and Dingler and this is game 14 and while I say the final game it only means the final game if it ends with a win for either player. So whoever wins this game it doesn't matter that they've already played 13 classical games whoever wins this one is the world classical champion. If it ends in a draw uh, then we go into rapid tiebreak. So there's uh, quite a lot to discuss the game lasted over six hours so let's dive straight into it. Uh, the first ceremonial move was made by this gentleman here uh, it is Malin Ashimbayev the chairperson of the Senate of the Parliament of Kazakhstan and he is pre-moving the uh, pre-moving he's moving uh, the the black pawn to d5 so I have no idea what's happening here usually uh, whoever makes the first cer ceremonial move opens with the white pieces he for some reason uh, replied to, to Ding's d4 by by d5 sort of as if Ding already played d4 uh, weird uh, weird thing but you know what are you gonna do so they retracted the moves and then Ding made his uh, actual first move and that is pawn to d4 and now everyone I was wondering what thing will choose for the final game will we see another London will we see a nice uh, calm opening uh, some sort of a maybe even a Queen's Gambit except it's some wild stuff maybe uh, another Nimzo Indian uh, let's see what happened we have d4 by Ding knight to f6 uh, we have c4 e6 and now knight to c3 with bishop to b4 uh, and the Nimzo Indian is on the board we have pawn to e3 and here we have castle so pretty standard stuff here and now in game 8 the one that Ding almost won had he found that that spectacular rook to d3 uh, lift uh, a3 was played but here we have bishop to d2 uh, and now comes pawn to d5 we have pawn to a3 and it's a very well-known position uh, Alireza Firuja headed against uh, Anish Giri uh, for example in the FTX uh, crypto cup last year uh, and uh, some other very notable games were played uh, in this line uh, but uh, here we have uh, bishop to e7, knight to f3, we have pawn to c5, now putting pressure on white center, d captures on c5, bishop captures, and now queen to c2, just uh, getting the queen on this long diagonal, and now there are a couple of games that reach this position, the most notable notable one being Alexander Donchenko uh, played it against Radoslav Wojtaszek, uh, where Wojtaszek continued with knight to c6, uh, and that game ended with a draw, uh, but here we have d captures on c4, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So bishop captures on c4, grabbing the pawn back, knight b to d7 by Jan, we have rook to d1, now getting the rook into the game, aligning it nicely with the queen, and we have bishop back to e7. Here you could also just consider a move like b6 and putting the bishop on this long diagonal, uh, but uh, Jan prefers to uh, get the bishop out of harm's way, it is in front, of, in front of the queen. So here just bishop back to e7, and now knight to g5, and Ding now now says uh, uh, this is if this was a normal game like if you played a, a game on Lee Chess or, or on chess.com and you're playing bullets you're playing blitz you know okay you're playing a knight to g5 you want to checkmate your opponent but you kind of don't expect this approach in a world chess championship match especially in a final game of the world chess championship match so here uh, Nepo had to figure out what was happening and he just play h6 and say okay move that knight away from there that's a silly move uh, and he calculates it and he plays it but now Ding does not move the knight back he plays pawn to h4 and it's not a peace sacrifice or anything you can't really capture this knight if you capture the knight captures captures you can't move the knight from f6 otherwise you're getting checkmated and this would um, be serious trouble for black so after this h4 move we have queen to c7 putting pressure on the bishop and now Ding spent a lot of time here uh, he, he spent like 25 minutes here and he moved the bishop back to e2 and uh, you could also consider bishop to b3 and this is sort of the main line to consider because now how do you how do you play this uh the the point is that you are threatening knight to d5 let's let's say black makes a silly move you're playing knight to d5 and now the queen has to go back because if you trade queens white first has a nice vision so you're gonna grab the bishop with tempo and after king to h8 bishop captures on c2 you're gonna be up a piece the problem is after bishop to b3 nepo can just move the queen to c6 and nothing is really happening here you're putting pressure on that g2 pawn f3 can be played and the game continues very very sharp um, uh, lines uh you know possible but Ding ret retreated with Bishop to e2 and the situation on the clock is now 57 minutes for Ding and over an hour and 30 minutes for Nepo so Ding again burning a lot of time here uh, also uh, well 
you, you might be wondering what about knight to knight to b uh, b8 uh knight to b5 then just queen to c6 again and again nothing spectacular the knight can go back to f3 then the knight comes to b6 puts pressure on the bishop and we get a, a queen trade bishop here queen captures bishop captures so this is also possible but yeah uh ding went with bishop to e2 and now comes rook to d8 by nepo uh an, a, a crucial continuation here might have been pawn to b6 and when i say crucial i only mean the top suggestion by the engine the problem Problem is now after b6 uh how does ding continue let's say rook to c1 uh and now okay the queen seems to be in a lot of trouble you can play queen back to d8 and now after bishop to f3 attacking the rook seems like you are getting a lot for white the problem is there are all sorts of nasty lines like bishop to a6 cutting off the white king from castling and even if you capture the rook on a8 there's knight to c5 and here white basically resigns so you have to be very very careful knight to uh, d3 check is coming there's no good way to, um, to to handle this for example you go back bishop to f3 still knight to d3 with check if king to d1 knight captures an f2 with check you pick up the rook on h1 and white is completely busted so that's why uh here rook to d8 was played instead uh, the, the, uh when i say instead i mean after after b6 and this line that we've shown if the queen now moves to d8 let's say queen to d8 and bishop to f3 uh you don't of course have to play this uh, white can also just bring the knight back and then the line that we've shown is, is not forced but it's still you you can play it bishop to b7 uh and the the game continues very nicely but the problem is now that um uh th there's nothing for white here white just has a silly h4 move in a position where white should not have an h4 move so b6 that's why i say it, sh it could have been the, the crucial line so okay rook to d8 was played by nepo we have rook to c1 and now knight to f8 uh we have knight g to e4 now getting the knight uh, out of harm's way uh you could also play knight to f3 uh also a fine idea but then again e5 comes and white can't really say that uh, he has anything for example knight to d5 there's knight captures on d5 and if queen captures on c7 captures and captures looks scary but there's bishop to d6 you attack the rook and once the rook moves then bishop to e6 again everything perfectly fine for black uh you know if, if anything you prefer black here so that's why knight g to e4 was uh, uh tried by ding knight captures on e4 and now you could play queen captures on e4 but uh it again uh, seems like you're giving black a bit too much queen to d6 will be played going after the bishop and after the rook defends now pawn to f5 and it doesn't look all that spectacular for white so that's why uh, ding played knight captures on e4 he offered a queen trade and Jan accepted the trade we have queen captures rook captures and just bishop to d7 uh, getting his bishop um, uh, into the game and while you could consider a move like rook to c7 it looks um pretty good uh black will just defend the pawn uh here and after h5 uh, there's rook d to c8 and now the, the rook has the uh, trade and after captures and captures you're going to play bishop to c3 put the bishop on this long diagonal uh so that is uh, definitely possible but you don't really gain all that much with rook to c7 all even though it looks like a great move so uh bishop to b4 was played uh, offering a trade of bishops and nepo takes it uh, why not you're going to double ding spawns here uh we have bishop to c6 and now knight to c5 and now not only does ding have doubled pawns he's also offering the g2 pawn in order to gain some activity for the rook so it looks it looks um very scary to do something like this in the final game of the world chess championship match the situation on the clock is 14 minutes for ding and uh, an hour and seven minutes for nepo so again a leading on time bishop captures on g2 nepo does take the pawn rook to g1 and now bishop back to d5 just keeping the uh, bishop out of harm's way again the crucial continuation probably was bishop to c6 the point being after b5 and it, it's very similar to what actually happened in the game in d4 uh, you don't have to move the bishop you can play b6 that's the point and now uh, this is pretty much forced e captures on d5 b captures on c5 rook captures on c5 uh, if you capture on e6 this is not really spectacular knight captures the c5 pawn is defended so the the main thing here is captures here and then pawn captures um, uh, on, on d5 and black gets gets the pass deep on uh this would be uh well very uh, interesting for black to say the least but okay nepo played bishop to d5 uh now comes e4 by ding bishop to c6 and pawn to b5 so similar but not quite as he reversed the move order now you don't have b6 because it would just be weird uh, you're gonna play captures captures and now bishop to a6 guards the queening square this is just um uh, lost for black 
So that's why after uh, bishop, uh, after pawn to b5, bishop to e8 by Nepo, uh, and now knight captures on b7. And okay, Ding wins back the pawn. Uh, situation on the clock is 39 minutes for Nepo uh, and some uh, uh, 43 minutes for for, for Jan. Uh, we have rook to d4 going after the pawn here, rook to c4 defending, and now rook back to d7. Going after the knight, we have knight to c5 now attacks the rook and rook to c7. Uh, also, a, a fine line uh, is rook to d6, but now if pawn to e5, then comes rook to d5, attacking the pawn, and now what do you play here? You can't, of course, play bishop to f3 because rook captures and e5 comes with check, so you're going to have to play knight to e4, and now look at this, rook captures on e5, knight to f6 with check, the pawn, of course, cannot capture, king to h8, knight captures on e8, rook captures, and now rook to c7, putting pressure on f7 and on a7, and after king to g8, you have to defend this because otherwise the pawn structure gets completely shattered rook to g4 you put the rook um, uh, here or or if black captures you're going to play pawn to b4 you will win the a7 pawn and it you know it's uh it, it's definitely possible uh so uh while uh it, it, it's it's a move maybe you're giving white a bit too much but it can be played uh so rook to c7 and now rook to c3 by ding uh we have rook a to c8 doubling up on the c file uh that's why ding put put the rook to c3 uh and uh also possible is knight to g6 this is a very tricky line that allows rook captures on g6 but the problem is even if you allow this rook captures pawn captures and knight captures on e6 attacking the rook uh you can't trade because then you just undouble white spawns which will be great for white so you're gonna have to play something like rook to d7 then f3 and the game continues look very uh, tricky but now black would be the one with the, the the shattered pawn structure you would have the the double g pawn and white would be up a pawn uh, for being down the exchange so again one of the possibilities and uh well uh, you know uh, this might be a bit of a longer video as there are many possibilities in this end game so rook a to c8 uh, putting pressure on the knight and here uh there are again many uh ideas you could play uh, you could play this over the knight and now if the knight is captured you could just checkmate black captures and once you go here this will just be checkmate but of course uh this is not forced once a rook to g3 is played you can just block with g6 and then you can defend with b4 so that's definitely an option uh, another thing you could do is uh, play this very tricky knight to b7 line it's uh what is this yeah, of course the rook cannot capture because then the rook on c8 hangs so you're going to play rook captures on c3 b captures and rook captures and now you're going to play king d2 just like that attack the rook and once rook goes back knight to d6 now uh puts pressure on the bishop and once you play rook to d7 to pin the knight the knight isn't going anywhere now e5 and if f6 pawn to f4 so even this is possible uh, where you know it's it's very hard to say what is what is happening here but the ding instead after this rook a to c8 move goes b4 right away and now we have a, a nice knight to d7 now we have rook c to g3 uh another another way to approach this would be not to react right away you could play king to d2 uh, and now if knight captures on c5 b captures and rook captures you could play rook g to c1 and now look at this if rook captures rook captures now you're going to play rook to b8 put pressure on this pawn here now rook to c5 and then the king just comes uh into the game so uh e even this is possible white would be down a pawn but you would get uh, a lot of activity that black king has uh, has some moves before he can get it into the game uh but okay uh rook c to g3 was played by ding right away and now it seems like nepo has to defend here but nepo shows that and he doesn't have to he just plays knight captures on c5 ding recaptures and rook captures on c5 now ding does capture on g7 king to f8 and now bishop to d3 and what's happening here uh situation on the clock 21 minutes for ding and 25 minutes for nepo uh, we have rook to d8 putting pressure on that bishop and here we have king to e2 everyone expected king to d2 to prevent the rook to c3 but the ding actually invites it and nepo goes for it rook to c3 so what is happening here where where can the bishop retreat there really aren't a lot of squares well first ding goes for rook to g8 check king to e7 and now rook one uh rook one back to g3 to defend the uh the 
uh, bishop here. And uh, it's uh, the, the problem is this position is completely wing for Nepo, but it's almost impossible to find out why. Uh, there are four more moves to be made to reach time control, and you, of course, Nepo was afraid to, to burn too much time here. And uh, other than that one line that I've seen that uh, even uh, standard engines don't see a win here, but the uh, Sese, the Norwegian supercomputer, found the winning line here. Uh, so if you guys want to try, if, if you can spot the supercomputer line in this uh, endgame, uh, feel free to pause the video and try to spot this line. Uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, e even the engines here, like the, the ones that I'm using now at pretty reasonable depth are not showing the win for uh, for Nepo, but there was one and, and Sese uh, showed us the way. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being able to play the end game like a supercomputer. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move is Rook to B3. And now the point is, okay, obviously we are putting pressure on this pawn here, but after white continues with something like pawn to f4, that doesn't matter. This is what Sese considers to be the best move for white. Uh, rook to d4, just incre increasing the, um, uh, the, the pressure. And after rook to e3, uh, bishop to d7. Uh, we have rook to b8 now, uh, defending the pawn, but now there's pawn to a5, and once this pawn starts marching down the board, uh, it is pretty much game over. But still a lot to be considered here, like rook to b7, uh, pawn to a4 will be pushed, b6, now comes a3, rook to a7, now even rook to a4, this is how you block, uh, but uh, king to d2, a2, and now even if rook to e1, you will play rook captures on b6, rook captures on a4, bishop captures on a4, and now rook to a1, uh, Bishop to b3 defends the pawn, and now if bishop to c2, you will capture it. Bishop captures, king captures, and you will play rook to a6. Put the rook behind the pass pawn, and now whatever white plays uh, doesn't really matter if you play king to b2. If if you trade pawns, of course, the end game is winning because the black king is so much closer to the white pawns. And if you don't, if you play something like e5 to try and hold the black king off, the black king still will find uh, his way into the game. There's no stopping this. So this is why it's winning. Uh, but Nepo didn't go for that. He played e5 right away. And and now Ding is back in the game. Uh, we have Rook to H8. He goes after the H pawn. Uh, and uh, but already is down to nine minutes, and he has three more moves to make to reach time control. We have Rook to D6, uh, and he find <laughs> Ding found it here. No worries there. Uh, Rook to D6, defending the pawn, and now comes uh, Ding's idea. Pawn to B6. It looks like a crazy pawn sacrifice that does nothing, uh, but it actually forces uh, a playable endgame because uh, Ding was very very close to actually losing here, as you've just seen. And if not for this B6 move, he probably uh, would already be lost. So now there's no way to handle this other than to capture rook captures on b6 was played and now what's the point of the spawn sacrifice well rook captures on e8 of course with check king captures and notice that the king is now on a light square you have a light square bishop and the rooks are staring at each other uh of course you know what comes next the bishop to b5 with check rook captures and now uh, rook captures on c3 and now we have this rook and pawn end game nepo is up a pawn it's a passed a pawn but can he do something with it uh, we'll see king to d7 we have rook to f3 putting pressure on the pawn here king back to e7 and rook to c3 now threatening check to pick up the pawn so a5 rook to c7 check king to f6 and now rook to c6 with check king to g7 and rook to a6 ding just puts the rook behind the pass pawn as one always should rook to b2 check king f3 rook to a2 defending the pawn now just king to g3 ding says i'm holding this to a draw uh, try and uh, uh, try and prove otherwise so okay pawn to h5 Rook to a8, now we have rook to a1, and king to g2. We have pawn to a4. Uh, if, you, if you go king to f6, try and bring that king into the game because you really want to do that. So the king defends the pawn and the rook can become active. Ding would immediately switch the attention over to the h pawn. So you can't really do that. So a4 was played. Now we have rook to a5 attacking the e5 pawn. Now pawn to f6. King to f3, now pawn to a3. We have rook to a6, now just king to f7. Uh, king to e3, we have king to e8, now comes king to e2. Uh, just, uh, you know, w waiting to, to see what happens. Uh, you, uh, If you capture the f-pawn, then pawn to a2 is winning, of course. There's no defense against the rook to e1 check, and then you promote to a queen. Even if you put the king on f3, it doesn't really matter. You're going to play rook to g1, and then, of course, even if rook here, you're going to queen, and you're going to have to give up the rook captures and captures. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's a trick, but of course, uh, Ding is too strong a player to fall for that. So just king to e2, king e7 with king to f3, and now rook to a2. 
Uh, if, if he pushes the pawn to e2, is just a very quick draw. So, of course, Nepo will try to milk this as long as possible. Uh, king to e3, uh, Ding now down to five minutes uh, on the clock. And he still needs to make three more moves to reach the next time control. And then he finally gets increment. Rook to a1, king e2, king f7, king to f3. And now rook to a2. We have king to e3. This is Ding's 60th move. And king to e7, Nepo also now reaches the second time control. King f3, king to d7, rook captures on f6. Nepo had to try something in order uh, not to um, draw the game on the spot. Now comes rook to b2, rook to a6, and now rook to b3 with check. King to g2, now king to c7. And okay, now the king will finally reach the white rook. Uh, and here we have king to f1. Uh, you could also try something like f4 here, but it would be very tricky. For example, pawn to, uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, f4 was played here. If you play something like king to f1, uh, then king to b7 can be very annoying because after rook to a4, king to b6, and now after king to g2 trying to waste time king b5 and after rook to a7 now you play king to b4 and now the pawn is defended the rook can become active so this would be very dangerous for ding so that's why he found f4 f4 is the only move that um, uh, you know keeps the position equal he captures an f4 and now pawn to e5 ding also starts advancing his pass pawn king to b7 Rook to a4, and now we have king to c6. And now uh, you could capture, but again, very, very dangerous stuff. If king captures, king comes to d5. Now you're going to have to go back. King captures here. And um, uh, this would be much, much uh, harder to hold it than just, uh, you know, uh, keeping the tension. Rook to a6 with check, king b5. Rook a7, king to b6, rook to a8, king to c5, and now just rook to a6. We have king to b5. Rook to a7, king to b6, and the rook to a8. Ding just, um, you know, moving his rook, waiting to see what Nepo will do. King c6, rook to a6, check, king to d7, king to f2, king to e7, king to g2, rook e2, and king to f2. Here we have king f, uh, rook g3, king f1, rook to c3, king f2, rook e3, king to g2, and king to d7. We have king to f2, king to c7, and now Ding finally plays it. Pawn to e6, as the, the king is now too far away from the pawn. King to d8, now comes a rook to e, a rook to a7, preparing e7 with check. Uh, so here, king to e8, and now just king to g2. And there is really no more uh, uh, way, way to push for Nepo. He has to trade pawns here. Rook captures on e6 was played. Rook captures on a3. We have rook to g6 with check. And now king to f2. Uh, this would be a terrible way for Ding to blunder the game. If he played king to f3, then rook g3 check blunders the rook away. And of course, uh, there's no way that that happens. But there's always, you know, a way that it happens. I mean, it would be, it would be a weird conclusion to a world chess championship match but okay king f2 of course ding doesn't blunder rook to g4 we have rook to a5 and now rook captures on h4 ding, uh, nepo now up two pawns but it doesn't really matter king f3 we have king to e7 rook to f5 now we have king to e6 and rook captures on f4 here nepo captured back rook captures on f4 and he was in this position on move 90 that nepo and ding agree to a draw as there is nothing more to be done here for those of you who are interested how this might have concluded after this captures uh, you will of course uh, not win the pawn uh, or you will maybe win the pawn but chances are you will probably get stalemated let's say rook to g3 you're gonna play rook g5 king h3 h4 you're gonna play rook g2 king g4 h2 uh, pawn to h3 and now after king to g1 and g3 you will just put a king in the corner and now uh, black doesn't have a choice either he moves the king back from the pawn uh, or you push the pawn and now it's draw by stalemate so that's how the game would have concluded uh, so yeah uh, that's uh, it for the classical portion of the World Chess Championship match. Uh, Nepo uh, had a chance here. Ding tried something. He didn't really get anything uh, spectacular out of the opening. He was just burning time. And uh, uh, it seems that those... Uh, it, it really does seem that, uh, you know... Uh, once uh, Nepo and his team discovered those uh, leeches files that Ding couldn't get uh, any, any sort of advantage out of the opening. Uh, so, you know... Uh, we'll see if he if he does better uh, in the rapids because this was a quite a good opportunity white pieces final game you know just playing uh, uh, no risk uh, and in the end he was the one that was risking defeat and if if we are to believe Sese uh, there was that uh, beautiful winning line 
uh, after uh, rook one to g3 would uh, was played uh, had nepo found rook to b3 uh, but yeah really crazy stuff tomorrow we continue and tomorrow we end we will see rapid uh, chess then we will see fast rapid chess and in the end uh, uh, if it's not decided in rapid it will be decided in a blitz playoff but it will not come to armageddon they agreed that okay we will, we will not decide the world classical champion by an armageddon game uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it a bit of a tough one for for the last game and a bit of a, a longer video so sorry about that uh, I would like to thank Kim Tori Jensen, Ole Anders Danielson, uh, GM Thomas Ruzman, Micah Kennedy, and Vladislav Usatenko for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the conclusion of the World Chess Championship. Uh, well, until it concludes. Uh, see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.